Welcome to my first vegetable garden. It's almost 2015 and I want to do a short series called Garden Planning and I'm going to talk about different things that you can do to prepare for the new season. This is about fertilizing and I want to talk about Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate is MgSO4 and the Epsom salt will add magnesium and sulfur to your garden. Both of those are macronutrients. A lot of people think nitrogen, phosphorus, um, and potassium are the main macronutrients, the main elements you need. You also have a whole second level, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. So Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate is a great way to get a water-soluble form of magnesium and sulfur into your garden and onto your plants. You can purchase Epsom salt at your pharma pharmacy or your grocery store. Four pounds will come in a container like this or in a bag and it'll cost anywhere from three to five dollars. So it's not very expensive. You can get it pretty easily and I do recommend using it in your garden. Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate, is a water-soluble form of magnesium and sulfur. What that means is you can make a mixture in a gallon of water, pour it onto the leaves of your plants, and your leaves will be able to absorb those nutrients into its system. And it also, when poured on the root system, the roots can pull it in real quickly. There are fast-acting fertilizers, which are usually water-soluble, which means you see a change really in a couple of days. Epsom salt is one of those. And then there's slow-acting fertilizers, where you put the fertilizer in your garden. It has to interact biologically with the soil, and it takes a while for the nutrients to become available to your plant. Magnesium is essential. It helps with chlorophyll, helps green up your plant. Uh, photosynthesis all tied together. A greener plant, more chlorophyll, better photosynthesis better energy going throughout the plant. It also help, helps with carbon dioxide uptake and glucose production. So it is essential and it is needed. Sulfur helps with root growth, helps plants manage the cold, helps with protein and enzyme production. So both those elements are essential elements. You don't need them in high degrees like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but you need them in the soil. And this again is also water soluble, so it's going to be hard to over fertilize your plants with Epsom salt because it's going to get rinsed away in the rain. They also say that sulfur helps with flavor. I think that it does. I think now, coming 2015, I found my peppers and onions have a better flavor when I use Epsom salt. So you could even just use it for uh, flavor if you weren't going to use it you know, to help your plants stay greener and grow better. You can use it on all plants. You can use it on flowers, you can use it on fruit trees, but I mainly use it on tomatoes, peppers, cucumber, squash, and zucchini. And there's two ways to use it. Your container plants and your earth beds. Container plants tend to suck the life out of your soil much more quickly than plants planted, vegetables planted in your earth bed. So there's a little bit difference in the recipe and the way I use it. I wanted to give you um, my practice for using it for 2015 every year. I look over what I do, I redefine how I may use products, and this year this is how I'm going to use Epsom salt, and it's pretty close to how I use, have, have been using it year to year. In your earth beds, your uh, plants planted in the ground, typically tomatoes, but again peppers, squash, zucchini, cucumbers, I find really seem to benefit from the magnesium sulfate. One tablespoon, this is a tablespoon, this is also Epsom salt. One tablespoon, just like this, right into the planting hole. Mix it well. You don't want to leave a pile of magnesium sulfate or any kind of fertilizer in the planting hole. So mix it deep, mix it well, really disperse it through the hole. So one tablespoon per planting hole, mixed well. That will get your plants started. Now, I use one tablespoon per gallon of water. So I just want to show you how easily it dissolves. So one tablespoon per gallon of water makes your leaf drench. And you can see it's dissolving pretty quickly. There's a little bit left in there, but a little more stirring, which I guess you don't really need to see at all, would take care of that. This will then have the Epsom salt dispersed through it, makes a great leaf drench. And that's just a foliar feed. That's the way to feed your plants the magnesium and sulfur that it needs very, very quickly. So, I do one tablespoon per gallon of water, so I set that up, soak the leaves. So when my tomato plant starts to flower, actually for tomatoes I wait for the first green tomato, but sometimes with cucumbers, zucchini, squash, and peppers, you're just waiting for the flowers to come. 
In the case of tomatoes, when I first see the, the first green fruit starting, I make a mix of one tablespoon per gallon, soak the leaves, soak a little bit of the soil, but I'm not putting the whole gallon on there, just soaking the plant down. Then I take one tablespoon, just like this, after I soak the leaves, and then I just scatter it nicely around the base of the plant, about three or four inches from the stem. That will set your plant up, you know, for, for many, many, many weeks. Come mid-season, after the plants have been producing, I repeat this step. So they get really one, two, three tablespoons of magnesium sulfate on the ground. They get a, two drenchings. I might do a third drenching if my plant is, is, is struggling. But this is basically how I set up my earth bed routine. And that will be plenty of magnesium and, and plenty of uh, sulfur for your plants. A lot of people say, test your soil. That's true. A test kit typically comes with um, chemicals to, to test nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So if you're going to test magnesium and sulfur, you're going to have to use some of your cooperative extensions. That means you have to take soil samples of all the places you plant, send it out, and see what's in there. I personally skip that step. Um, I keep an eye on the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. This is water-soluble. It will wash away, and it's really hard to damage your plant if you follow this routine. Now, for containers, it's a little bit different. I put one tablespoon per five gallon of soil. So I plant in five gallon buckets. One tablespoon will go in there, mix it thoroughly through. That gets your plant started. Now, once the plant's growing, you know, and it's maybe a foot high or something, but it gets to a little bit of size, the temperature's right, it's growing. I spray the leaves either one time weekly with a teaspoon of the Epsom salt in a quart of water. It's five milliliters per one liter of water and just spray the leaves weekly. That will get your plant plenty of magnesium and sulfur. Or I skip that step and I take uh, another tablespoon in a gallon of water and I just soak the plant down and I put that whole gallon right into the five gallon container. You can do one or the other. You don't have to do both. And that will really keep enough magnesium and sulfur in your container plants. And the reason you're doing container uh, planting a little more often and I actually made a mistake. This is every week, and this is about every two weeks. So you soak the leaves and the container soil about every two weeks. The reason that you're either spraying weekly or doing a uh, foliar soak and you know soaking the soil every two weeks is because the plants in your containers will suck the life out of the yeah the plants in the soil will suck the nutrients out of the soil very very quickly when it rains when you water a lot of the nutrients get leached out. So you want to keep a steady supply of nutrients going into your container plants. That's why you see a lot of container plants yellow very quickly. Using Epsom salt in this matter, one tablespoon per five gallons, one teaspoon in a quart, spraying it weekly, or every two weeks, one tablespoon in a gallon will take care of that problem. And I hope that gives you an idea of how you can use Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate in your in your garden. If you have questions, please certainly leave a comment and I will get back to you pretty quickly. And again, for this year, 2015, I'm going to go over some ideas that you can use for planting purposes in your garden and, you know, maybe adapt or modify for it to work in your area. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.therusticgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.